Hello and welcome to another episode of me painting. I actually started painting a painting <laughs> and I got quite a way through and then uh, what happened? My computer crashed and uh, the recording died. <laughs> so we're painting again. I'm going to paint the same painting again. <laughs> All the joys of YouTube. So, uh, Let's get the background in. I've done this before, so I know what I'm doing this time. So maybe it's good that it failed <laughs> the first time. <laughs> I could do this one better. <laughs> so I'm going to throw in some green for the background. A nice bit of green, a bit of green here. So I'm just using a bit of sap green and some uh, cadmium yellow. Sap green and cadmium yellow and looking at the different shades as I'm doing it to capture that light. And then uh, a little bit of green there as well couple of trees here. I could just paint them over the top of that. It's got green there as well. Bit of a green and blue just to add a bit more to this. Sit back and have a look at that and see if we like it so far, quite happy so far and now get some yellow, cadmium yellow a little bit of titanium white in there I'm going to pick out these lighter spots in the background there's a few light bits here I'm just going to capture those using this brush Use my finger just to tap away any that I don't want to soften them a little bit. Something like that. A bit more of a stronger green. You get all kinds of uh, colour in the background so in woods and uh, what I'm just going to do is fly from one colour to the next and put it in. So what you can do is you can get some of the sap green, some of the ultramarine blue and create another green sort of a cooler green and you can throw that in where you need it like there's an area behind this tree it sort of goes there it's got a bit more blue in it Then uh, a bit more there. Bit dark there. That sort of comes around a bit. It's 
funny as my paint dries on my brush I can uh, use it a little bit better because I don't always want too much paint on there so I can dry brush a little bit and then it also breaks the paint breaks I'll show you down here when your paint is slightly drying you can break it like this and that's quite a nice effect at times okay dancing around with the yellows and on this bit there bit there as well something like that and then what I want is to create a sort of a bluey dark bit of the burnt I mean burnt on but it's uh, kind of a Mars black and some cerulean blue. I'm gonna make my bluey dark because there's a reflective light hitting the top here. So I'm gonna put this in. Reflective light, but I want a, a dark first. Get my dark in now, and then I can put my light in on top. I mean, this is still a darker, darker, darkish area anyway. But I, I find if I do it this way, it makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> I'm always looking for an easier way to paint, make it a bit easier on myself, because it's hard, isn't it? Painting is quite hard work. I think it is. It's hard. It's fun, it's a challenge, but it's hard. So I don't really have that natural skill. I uh, just work hard at it. Because <laughs> I enjoy it. I love, I love painting, it's so much fun. So I don't mind that I have to work a bit harder than the talented people. <laughs> so I'm going to get some green and brown. Get a little bit of ground colour mixed in with this. Some of this area we won't see it because uh, I've got to put a load of trees in. <laughs> but some of it will show through. Okay. lost this I needed to find this I want to spray my paints don't want to lose my paint <laughs> got to keep it moist so now what I want to do is I want to uh, get the bottom part filled in as well but with more of a, a warm color sort of a brownie reddish dark mixed in with this <laughs> A little bit of blue in it. It's all sorts going in there. Bit of red, bit of blue, bit of brown. Just a slightly different dark, really. I'm going to start putting that in here. I kind of scrub it in and then in some of the uh, other colours the blues and stuff I can just mix it in it doesn't really matter to me because I'm going I'm just using this as my dark my under under colour the reason I've started using grey card a lot at the, at the moment is such a good neutral colour that I 
find it really perfect to see my colours on. So at the moment I'm using this. But sometimes I like using the the beige sort of paper. Right, there we go. Got a nice dark going. Now I'm gonna start putting some trees in. Some of this dark colour. Really dark. A bit of blue in it. Let's start painting in our trees. So we've got one tree growing right there. And then uh, another one here. It grows to about in line with that one, but it's a bit narrower. To about there. And then there's a bigger tree. Kind of grows. All there. Yeah, something like that, and then we've got a really big tree right here, and that grows to about there. It's got a uh, branch going up here. And one going there. 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 <laughs> They're all over the place, really. Uh, there's one. Got that. That's about right. that now we can start putting in a bit more detail I need to block this bit in though I need to get that green in there <laughs> see some uh, 
tree shapes, I mean uh, areas where the leaves and things are. I'll just put them in. Okay, now I'm going to continue but I'm going to use a smaller brush because I need to do more details. I want more detail. So, a bit of the old sap green and white and yellow. I think in fact that is quite nice. And then we can use the little brush to capture some of the lights. Now the light is a, a yellowy white in here, but sometimes you'll get the sky showing through. You might need lots of little blue dots. Some of the uh, greeny yellow as well. Sometimes uh, you, you do get bits of sky. I'm, I've got a bit of sky behind there. I might actually put that in. But yeah, it's fun doing all these little marks, though. I think that's what makes it that bit more interesting because you all these different lights you start painting them in to your painting it just improves the picture that bit more and a bit more because what I've got is the nice blue A little bit of blue and white on the brush. And there's some sky colour there. So I'll just put that in and then maybe I can insert a little bit here. Just where there is a touch sky poking through. There isn't that much because it's quite densely uh, filled in with trees but there is little bits and I can put them in. There we go. And now down here we want to reflect some of the ground. The ground is reflecting by the sky, the blue sky from above is reflecting on the ground in the dark area. So we can create ourselves that colour, that reflected blue. Let's see what this is like. Yeah, that's probably about right. No, it's not completely covered. Little bit, I put a little bit of red in it, just a tiny bit of red. If you could see that, <laughs> just a tiny bit of red in the color, just a little bit. This brush is quite worn out, so sometimes it opens up a little bit. <laughs> But that kind of works quite well for this because there's a lot of uh, 
you, you can create a lot of strokes in one go. <laughs> Almost the the brush paints paints it for me. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> So we're just setting things up now because what we want to do is after we've done this bit we want to really start doing the fun bit when you start putting the dappled light on that's when it gets more fun but we've got this nice blue colour So, we can start with the, uh, the dappled light area now, get some of this yellowy red, that warmth, nice orange, I want it to be quite warm, and we'll look at areas where light hits the most and this tree is one of them it goes of course it's a, a broken light but it's it's there and it sort of goes and then there's some light here some little lamps in on this tree as well there. there's none on this tree <laughs> but there's some light on the floor there's quite a lot here on the ground so I'll put that in It when it's got that nice tint of red in it, these are sort of straight like that, and there's a couple of bits coming off it. Beep, beep. There's a piece there, Get that dappled light coming through. You have to imagine, I suppose, that you imagine the trees, if you're making it up, I'm using a, a reference picture at the moment, but if you're making it up, you can imagine the trees, you can imagine, like I'll change this just for the fun of it, imagine the tree branches and stuff, the dark side of it, maybe there's a big gap there, you can design it the way you want it to go then. And then if you don't want an area with light on, then you can decide not to because of your artistic reason. <laughs> Nothing quite like having your own artistic power to do what you like in your painting. It is your painting at the end of the day, isn't it? You can do what you want to do. Okay, quite like that. Now I'm going to go into my liner brush and then I can get a bit more 
going for a bit of white in this yellowy red and kind of overexpose some of the areas <laughs> you know like you're painting a uh, photo and you see some of the lights are just so bright kind of overexposes I just really want to get this make this really obviously light It's a good way of creating that dappled light. If you want to do a dappled light painting, this effect in it, now you know how. You can design your own, your own painting and just use the uh, the theory the behind it. Use a little bit of a warm colour to start with and then you can add a little bit more light to it afterwards like this area there, it's got, going to go really light there now I've even gone into like the pure white, I've kept it a little bit less but you can even do that, you can go really light So I want a bit more colour. I want to capture some of these dappled light effects back here as well. But I've got to use the smaller brush because you want to uh, make it look distant. If you have smaller brush strokes in the background, they look more distant, and then the bigger ones in the foreground. It's another way of like creating that illusion. A bit of light behind there. And there. And in there is some light. And you can choose areas you don't want there to be so much light on it. You can decide. Like if you're painting a real scene and you decide, hmm, I think I'll just cut out and edit out certain areas for an effect that you want, you can do that as well. You don't always have to paint exactly what's out there. You can do your own thing. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a bit of a uh, yellowy green and I want to put a bit more here. I'm going to smudge it with my finger. So I'm going to capture this area. A bit of light on this tree. I want it to dull a bit as well. So I want to get some of it lit up. a bit more of this to capture this bit here I see a little bit more of that and on this tree as well there's a bit up here a tiny bit there I didn't even notice that <laughs> and there's also a bluish colour There's a bluish sort of colour that goes up this tree there. I'm not loading my brush again, I'm just using the same and then using my finger just to smudge it a bit. 
Same on this tree as well. Just a bit on that. Not like that. Let's have a look at the whole painting as well. See what areas that need improving a little bit. Like I noticed behind this tree, it needs to be darker. Some of these areas are darker as well. So I use my finger just to put a little bit of paint on. Put, pick up a little bit of dark. Change the colours in these some of these areas. Of course, the darker it is around these light spots, the lighter the light spots become. <laughs> Not to uh, play around with. Got this funny greeny colour, no, I don't really like it. <laughs> There's some more that's sort of darker, darkish strokes, I should say. A bluish area, <laughs> a uh, dull, darker area. And I'm sort of going to bring it all together a little bit, scrub my brush across it, and let some of the paint go into that, and it'll sort of bring it together a little bit. And then, what I need now, because there's some like uh, bits and pieces on the floor, just get a little bit of this blue and some leaves and twigs and stuff and it's picking up like colours reflecting the sky and stuff you can get stones and things reflecting on in the in the, the hot areas <laughs> so this sort of light kind of goes into that like that so it's quite nice it shows the shape a little bit better this um, edge of this tree needs defining so I'm going along now the areas and improving things a bit. And you can, uh, once you've got the mass of the painting in, that's when you can start putting in detail and you can take it to whatever detail level you want, really. Maybe you want it to have a lot of little branches and you get your tiny brush out, paint them all in. I've done that a few times. <laughs> it's quite good fun actually. Spending a long time on a painting is good fun. You don't always have to do quick paintings. Okay, now I can just get some really light 
almost white in, in here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this actually. That's worked out really good. <laughs> it's worked out better than my other one that I did, didn't manage to get recorded because my computer crashed. <laughs> well, actually, OBS crashed. That's what I record on. But never mind. This has worked out pretty nice. And uh, it's so much fun to paint, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> just paint it again. <laughs> I remember in the past when stuff like that used to happen to me, I used to almost cry. Because <laughs> you spend uh, time and effort on a video, and then if your video disappears, it, it used to be a, such a tragic moment. <laughs> Some dark on there. Spin my brush a little bit there. Get that shape. Same here as well. A bit of bit of blue and brown. Lost some of my dark there. Don't want to lose that. And that tree, because it is a really dark tree. Okay. That was worked out a bit better than I thought it was going to. I thought I was never going to paint this as good as I did the first time. Turns out I painted it better. <laughs> so I'll forget that we did the first video. <laughs> so anyway, there we go. There's a, uh, a nice scene. How to paint dappled light. And you can have some reflected light. And then dappled light. And mix your lighting up so you've got the nice warm light coming through. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. And I'll... See you at another one. Cheers. Bye.